Hi, Terry. Nice to be talking with you today. Hi, John. Thanks for doing this. <laughs> so, uh, can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so, my name's Jerry, and I had just finished studying in the Mastering Ayurvedic Digestion Eating course um, at Joyful Belly. Um, I'm originally from the UK, but when I started studying on the course, I was living in China. Um, my background is in fashion design, um, where I work as a pattern cutter. Um, so, quite different to Ayurveda, um, but yes, it really grabbed my attention and so that's why I started studying. <laughs> All right. So uh, you were living in China, doing fashion design in China, and uh, are you in your? Are you still living there? Um, no. So I left in March this year. Um, I had been living in China for a year and a half, where I I originally lived in London for four years and kind of felt a bit fed up of London life and thought I'd do something different and um, so I set off and I went and did a yoga teacher training in Bali first um, and then I moved to originally I was going to move to Hong Kong but and start just finding a job in China um, so working for a small brand uh, fashion brand um, where there was just maybe yeah, it was only really three of us um, and I lived in a in a, a little Chinese village at the bottom of a mountain um, with them so it's <laughs> quite the contrast to London um, but yeah really different uh, style of life okay and uh, did you was your uh, do you feel like your health was challenged living in such a different environment or was it is that smooth no it was it was very challenged <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't really I don't think I really realized how much um, your environment and the temperature affects um, the body really and yeah, I'm obviously from England, not used to heat at all or humidity. Um, and I didn't really realise how my body hates hot and humid. And after starting the course, I just realised how much the aggravation my body had. Um, and then I went on from there to try and remedy that with pitta pacifying diet. Um, so it was such a, I mean, I feel like everything comes at the time you need it. Um, and I definitely feel like Ayurveda came to me when I needed it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you were taking the course while yeah. going through some of these struggles and learning some tips along the way. And it sounds like that may have been, uh, you know, personally useful <laughs> mm, for you. Did it help? Yes. Are you feeling better? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it took a while because I think I was pretty imbalanced and I had some other health issues going on um, but I felt like once I learned a little bit about how to kind of balance yourself um, at least I felt then I could take things into my own hands to try and you know do things to help myself rather than just sitting there and not knowing what to do and doing nothing so yes it definitely helps a lot sure. yeah so was that your original uh, vision in signing up for the program? And was that even your original interest in Ayurveda? Uh, um, or was that just like a pleasant s surprise? I mean, um, I mean what, what kind of got you interested in, in Ayurveda and healing in the first place? So I actually heard you on a podcast um, talking about tongue analysis. Uh -huh. And that exactly the same day I wake up, and my tongue felt ill, which oh. it sounds like a weird thing to say, but I looked in the mirror and I never really noticed my tongue before, but I looked in the mirror and it was coated and red and, you know, not good looking. Um, mm. And then that same day I heard you talking about tongue analysis or Ayurveda tongue analysis and I was just instantly hooked and I just started researching everything I could. Um, so that's what really drew me in um, because then I wanted to just like learn more and, I just felt it fascinating that the tongue is a window into our internal health. So that's how I kind of got picked in really. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that, uh, <coughs> that sort of fascination, I think we all have a fascination with our bodies and trying to figure out how they work. And, um, I know if I find something that, uh, offers me, uh, 
some really helpful new perspective on it. I, I it's very exciting. Mm, definitely. So, so how was life as a student? I mean, you were juggling a finance, a, a fashion industry career in a foreign country while studying in a program in the United States online. So how did that all fit together? Um, yeah, it was an interesting combination. Um, you know, it actually worked really well because I guess living in a foreign country in a little village, I didn't really have many friends, uh -huh. uh, which meant I did have a lot of time, um, which I used for my advantage for sure. Um, to study on the program but I feel like if you're you know thinking about do you have time um, you can definitely find time and kind of you know just clear your schedule a little bit to make time to do it so um, because obviously I was in China and I come back to the UK um, and I've continued working here uh, freelancing so I just have to reschedule my time again to make it work um, to finish the end of the course um, and yeah, there was so much support from fellow students um, and, you know, all the teaching staff, you guys are all fantastic. Um, and I loved our Facebook group where we could ask any questions to the staff or the students. And it was always a very supportive environment to kind of to be in. So I feel really grateful that we had that. Mm -hmm. So you found that you were able to get questions answered, um, mm. you know, that you know, you took the program, but there was that, you know, student teacher interaction was helpful uh, for any remaining issues that came up. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, the Facebook group, I didn't, I'm, I have to say I wasn't a massive, I don't really go on Facebook. So I found myself like, oh, I've got to go on Facebook. Um, but then it kind of became like just part of, you know, every day, just checking in if anyone had written anything or if you've got uh -huh. any question normally always someone would answer to the question you had if it's if you were directing it to say yourself or Kimberly then you guys would answer or if it was a more general question then the fellow students on the course would always reply so yeah it felt like a kind of a platform that was really useful while being on the course any worries um, we could just put them out there and normally then we would feel reassured that maybe some other people are feeling like that if you're feeling overwhelmed or um, anything like that really so yeah it was really good yeah it sounds like an, it could I mean if you're in a remote area and don't have uh, lots of friends it sounds like there was an opportunity to connect with people too uh, through that is that true or you know did that yeah. was that like helpful even just socially being in such a remote place yeah it was it was weird because you don't really think about um, I don't know I've never really thought about having friends online <laughs> yeah yeah you, you kind of yeah you get to know everyone online and um even just like in the lectures hearing each other's voices um you're like oh i know that voice like you know you kind of get to know each other um and so it was yeah it was nice being in a foreign country where i didn't really have friends but then knowing i had this like online support network um, that i could go to for questions about things which was yeah a really great thing yeah good what about uh challenges that you overcame as a student was there like any were there some moments where you were uh you know pushed <laughs> um, so i guess like my main challenge that i already knew was going to be a challenge before i began was i guess writing i guess at the time we thought it was a thesis and then it changed to the therapeutic protocol um mm -hmm because of I obviously having studied fashion I studied fashion at uni and I did yeah. creative subjects before that and um, the coursework is normally just not to do with writing <laughs> so yeah I wasn't sure how I would, how I would cope with doing that but I actually surprised myself and I really enjoy researching um, and researching we had to research western articles and relate them to Ayurvedic um, articles to kind of bring the whole therapeutic protocol together and I just found that really interesting um, and I yeah, kind of got really into the researching and then pulling everything together and because the the way the therapeutic protocol is broken up 
um, it made it kind of easy. It wasn't so daunting basically to have to write it. So that was yeah probably my biggest challenge I ever came. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's. I think that's what every student in the digestion program says. They're like, we're getting really worried about this upcoming writing assignment. Yeah. And then they find out that that was like their favorite part of the program when it's over. Mm -hmm. I, I think most, in fact, every student that I talk to uh, feels that way because it's just such a great sense of accomplishment. You know, and it's something you did, you created, you, you personally, and you just kind of proved to yourself that you can do it, you know, <laughs> like yeah. not just the writing, but the understanding of Ayurveda or how to apply these principles that you learn from the course to like a real world situation. Yeah. Uh, there's something great about that. And I think people love it at the end, but they're scared of it in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I a hundred percent agree. <laughs> yeah. So do you envision sharing Ayurveda with, the public professionally or was it just for personal he healing um no definitely want to share what i've learned um mm -hmm. i yeah i've already started to do some online consultations um and i teach yoga so i've just started talking about some digestive things when we're going through yoga poses um and how maybe like doing a twist is going to affect digestion or um yeah different things to aid digestion if you're feeling a certain way um, through yoga and also looking to start some ayurvedic workshops um so i want to host maybe uh kind of collaborating with a like local eatery to do like an ayurvedic workshop and and food um something like that. So I feel like yeah. what we've learned is so valuable and beneficial to people that I really want to kind of spread the word about it. Yeah, great, great. Um, so would you, you know, do you think that, um, you know, anyone can benefit from this course? Do you recommend the course? Do you feel like it's something that, that people should do? Uh, uh, t you know, students uh, who may be listening, prospective students who may be listening, uh, will probably you know, just want are asking themselves the question, like, is this for me? You know? Yeah. Um, I think it can benefit anyone, like anyone who takes this course. It's it's an investment in your kind of like well being and life, really, because you learn invaluable tools to improve your health. Um, just three basic lifestyle practices and food so no matter if you're going to take it because you want to become a practitioner or if you're taking it for your own well-being I think it can benefit anyone in such a massive way that you know, I would 100% recommend the course. Great great well um, one more question uh, is there any words of wisdom that you could share with uh, uh, someone who is listening, like some tip that just, okay, when you did that, it just made things easier or, you know, just any little uh, bit of advice for a person who's maybe just starting in the program. Okay. Um, I would say the first month you might feel a bit overwhelmed. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's getting used to a different way of working. Um, knowing like the structure of the lectures the homework so that first one if you're feeling a bit like that just don't worry it gets easier for sure and um, yeah once you've worked out the system and like downloading your homework and getting in the flow and you've decided on your the days of the lectures you're going to do live and when you're going to do your homework then everything just gets a little bit easier after the first one so do it and don't give up yeah, that's great. That's a good tip. Um, I, I do think a lot of students, when they first get started, they're like, oh, there's, you know, these uh, different um, ways that we're connecting and how do I keep them all in my head at once or whatever. But then you realize after a few weeks, it's just these like four different ways that, we're, that we are interacting with each other and it's just four. <laughs> but yeah. when you're trying to learn the four, you're, you're thinking it's, uh, it's going to be hard. But uh, a few weeks in, everybody kind of, gets in their groove and uh, 
and it's and it's effective. So mm. thank you, uh, Jerry, for sharing your experience with our students, uh, with people who are thinking about the program. Uh, I appreciate that. No problem. Thank you, John. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.